What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today I wanted to show you one of the coolest cases that I've ever come across. Now it's actually not a case, it's a heat sink. There are two issues with it though. First is the price. It's $29.99 on Amazon right now. Second, it's only compatible with the first Raspberry Pi 3, not the 3B+. Either way, I still wanted to show this off. It's known as the Armor Case. Now, iUniker has these on Amazon right now, $29.99. Hopefully, in the future, they release a version for the Raspberry Pi 3B+. It is advertised as a case, but it's not really a case. This is full aluminum with two fans here. This is the heatsink for the CPU and the Ethernet chip. We're going to dive a little deeper into the box here. We have our screws and some thermal adhesive. And at the very bottom of this box, we have the bottom plate, which will cool the RAM chip on the Raspberry Pi. It'll also dissipate heat from the whole unit itself. So it is a bit pricey at $30. It's almost as expensive as a Raspberry Pi 3. But if you want that industrial look, you might want to check this thing out. I'm going to be testing this on the Raspberry Pi 3B with the heatsink and without a heatsink. I'm going to be running Raspbian. I've done this test several times with different cases. I run the test for 20 minutes, I get 40 readings. We max out the CPU to as high as it can go, and we're going to see how cool this will keep it. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the case. It does come with these little thermal adhesive strips, and they work very well for these small CPUs. I don't think you're going to notice much of a difference if you use good thermal compound versus these. They don't really put out as much heat as a real x86 CPU, so these pads will be perfect. The top half of the heat sink has a spot for the CPU and the Ethernet chip. I just put the thermal pads on here. And the bottom has a spot for the RAM chip. All of this is going to fit on the Raspberry Pi 3 very well. And I think it makes the Pi 3 look amazing with this setup. Just remove the blue backing. We're going to place the top of the heat sink on the Pi. Make sure it lines up correctly. It's only going to go one way. And we're going to plug it in. Now these fans are very quiet. If you have these sitting over by your TV and you're five feet away from it, you will not hear these fans. They're very low RPM. They do a good job cooling also. But this heat sink is huge, so it's gonna soak up a lot of heat. And we'll just place the bottom on. Now make sure you peel both sides of the thermal adhesive off. I did that off camera. Took a little while to get underneath it. They sent us five screws. We're only gonna need four of them. All right, so I have it fully assembled. I think it looks great. It is very beefy. Makes this thing pretty heavy because this is some nice aluminum here. Now it's time to see how cool this heat sink keeps the Raspberry Pi 3. This is an extreme test. I am going to be stressing out the CPU to 100% for 20 minutes straight. It will create log files for me, 40 of them to be exact, and by the end, we'll see how hot it gets versus no heat sink. I think it's going to do a really good job. Now one of the reasons you want a heatsink on your Raspberry Pi for retro gaming is when the Pi hits a certain temperature, the CPU underclocks itself. It's called throttling. When it underclocks, your performance will decrease. Having a heatsink on will let it stay at the maximum frequency for as long as possible. I've already run this test without the heatsink. What I'm going to be doing is pasting some code into each one of these terminal windows here. One of them will create a log file and Pi logs right here. This is the no heatsink log that I just created. Gets pretty hot by the end there and the CPU is throttling around three to four minutes. So we're already losing performance three to four minutes into this test. Now this is an extreme test. There are hardly any tasks out there that are going to stress it as much as this. But I want to see what this heatsink will do. First, it's going to create a log. Here's our first reading here. Now I'm going to max out the CPU here. Paste it. The CPU is now running at 100% for 20 minutes. As you can see, we're at 100%. It is stressing this thing out. Next reading that pops up will be higher than the original, guaranteed. 
If you're interested in running this test, I will leave links in the description to Dropbox. You can download both of these files. It's fairly easy to run. You just saw me paste it right into two terminal windows. I'm going to fast forward this. We're going to go 20x speed because this does take 20 minutes to finish up. At the end of this video, I'm going to create a rough chart and just show you the difference between no heatsink and the armor case heatsink. So the test is finished. The last temperature we read was 54.8 degrees Celsius with the heat sink. I'm going to open up both of these log files. I'll also create a little rough chart for you. Just a quick glance at this chart, you can see that the armor case heat sink kept the pie very cool. By around three to four minutes on no heat sink, we were already throttling the CPU. And by the very end of the test, 20 minutes stressing that CPU, no heatsink, 81.1 degrees Celsius, with the armor heatsink, 54.8 degrees Celsius. That's a big drop in temperature. We never throttled with the armor case on, and I really didn't expect it to. That's a lot of aluminum, plus we have two fans cooling that metal off. So here's the quick chart. On idle with no heatsink, we were at 45.1 degrees Celsius. With the armor case, 37.6 degrees Celsius. At around three minutes with no heat sink, the Pi started to throttle the CPU, trying to keep it as cool as possible. Armor case, at three minutes we were only at 52.2 degrees Celsius. By the very end, 20 minutes of testing, no heat sink, 82.1 degrees Celsius, or 179 degrees Fahrenheit. With the armor case, 54.8 degrees Celsius or 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So as you can see, the armor case definitely kept the Raspberry Pi 3 very cool. So the case definitely works. It's a really nice looking case, looks very industrial, but at $30 on Amazon, I'm not sure how many people are going to want to pick this up. If they could pull that price back a little bit and then add the option for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, I think this would be an awesome case for most anybody. But right now, it's up to you. If you're willing to spend that $30 on something like this, be my guest. I'll leave links in the description. So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Like I mentioned, I will leave a link in the description. They're $30 on Amazon. If you want to pick one up, go right ahead. If not, I completely understand. If you guys happen to come across any cool pie accessories on Amazon or eBay, let me know in the comments below. The scene has been a little stagnant for the last month or so. I've been looking around for new stuff, and this is one of the reasons I picked this up. Really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.